I was told that my task is to talk a little bit about pastoral care, and uh, I'm not a pastor, even though I teach pastoral care and counseling at Trinity Theological College. What I like to do is to start by highlighting a few things, and one is of course this need to dispel myths when we're working with people who identify themselves as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. I think this is important. If you read the, the kind of argument as resurface in the press after what MND said, uh, you also notice how easy people just make sweeping statements. And then I begin to wonder that you know when we talk about people who are afraid, that a whole uh, social fabric will fall apart, the family life will be no more, and everything else, blah, 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 because <laughs> they are same sex relationship and, and so on. Then I begin to look at my 35 years of uh, psychological work that I have realized I have not come across one disturbed person who has come from a same-sex same parents. You know, they all come from heterosexual parents. <laughs> <laughs> so if you conclude that same-sex parents are dangerous, then heterosexual parents produce homosexuals. <laughs> Thing, isn't it? It's a good thing, isn't it? It's a good thing. I think, I think, yeah, so I think we have to come and break down barriers and, and stop having all these kind of uh, arguments and statements. I think that's important. You want to care for anybody. We have to dispel me. And I'd like to take up from where he might left off that we are dealing with human beings. We are dealing with people whom we believe are made the image of God. And we're also dealing with people who are worth our, our attention, our respect. Yes, somebody's objecting. <laughs> okay, let me try it. We're dealing with people who, who, who certainly are worth our respect. And as far as the church position is concerned, this is where my position is. In my position, right? This is what my position is. Why am I providing care? I'm providing care at two levels. One, of course, it's a clear biblical mandate that we're supposed to care for everyone. Galatians 6 tells us, tells me, that I should do good to all men, all people, especially, of course, to those in the household of God. So there's no discrimination. We're supposed to care for everybody, and that's the injunction that I buy by. Secondly, as a mental health professional, it is in our code of ethics that we should do not discriminate against anyone who seeks uh, our services. And that is the position I take. So on those two counts, I, I have this position that I am supposed to care for everybody. Then what do I do in order to care for people? I would suggest that if I want to care for anybody, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of your philosophy, values in life, whatever problems you have in your life, I think one of the things I need to learn to do is to talk a high level of openness and be willing to associate with everyone and this is also consistent, isn't it? We, we, we read about Jesus Christ was totally, totally misunderstood. People thought he was a drunkard, so he had must have gone to joke, you know? Right? <laughs> he can't afford it. He can't afford it. He has friends who could afford it, you know? So he gone to all these places. Huh? And uh, I'm sure he will go and uh, kind of social with people like that, his clothes and so on. But he also considered a glutton, so he must be going around eating and drinking. And people say he was a friend of God and everything else. So there's a, there's a need for association. And I think if I do not associate with all kinds of people, then what mandate do I have to provide care to anybody? And thirdly, along with the association, of course, it's a high level acceptance. And that becomes very difficult because whenever I work with anybody with any kind of problem, very often I have to challenge myself. For example, if I'm working with somebody who has some form of mental illness, I have to ask myself, in what way am I as crazy, you know, just as crazy as the person I'm working with? Because I like to believe in every one of us, there's a little bit of craziness. It's just that some people have a little more trouble with their craziness than I have. And I happen to be one who could help them. But I want to get in touch with that part of me that could be equally vulnerable to depression, to mental illness, to suicidal thoughts. I want to also get in touch with my own sexual sexuality as well. What am I? Who am I? And I think this is something that's very important to sort of grapple with some of these things myself so that I have to confront myself even as I offer a helping hand to those who are in need of care. So acceptance, I think, begins with acceptance of myself, the fact that I'm a sinful person saved by grace. 
I'm as imperfect as anybody else, despite the fact that I have Christ with me, and that I'm so vulnerable. So who am I to ever point a finger? And my favorite, of course, is Jesus' statement. The one who has no sin, let him throw the first stone. And one of the things I learned over the years is I like to throw <coughs> stones at those who are throwing stones. <laughs> <laughs> so if I have this level of acceptance, then as far as a profess- mental professional, as a mental professional, my therapy is for all. Anyone who has struggles who need help, I should be available for them. And what I want to do is to ensure that whatever I do, that I do not discriminate, that I should respect people for who they are. Because in working especially with the LGBT community, I find that they have a lot of struggles. And one of the things they don't need anymore from the church is they do not need any persecution from the church. They have enough struggles for their own. And very often it pains me that people who are struggling with such issues of life, who are just trying very hard to be human, have been discriminated and even persecuted, especially from the church. Thank you.